So this is the original photo I received from another installer asking me to come out and do a repair on this system. I couldn't get out there in time, but this is a testament to why not to use wire nuts on DC splices. They will burn up. This is, uh, all I can say is thank God that they had brick right there. And here's a close up of the splice. Later on, the homeowner actually calls me out to inspect it. So here it What's is. What's up guys, it's Johnny Valentine. I'm inspecting a jacked up solar install on the Solark on a rainy day. Come along and I'll show you what not to do on a solar install. So more on this later, but this is a uh, install that they just did. Right away we got some problems with electrical clearances. Got to lean over the battery to lean into the solar arc. And got to lean over the solar arc and lean over the battery to lean into the electrical panel. And you can't work in that panel, so. This is wrong, folks. We lay out our mech room so that everything is spaced so you can work on everything. Also need to label your back feed breakers and snap your back feed breaker in at the bottom of the panel. You can't supply uh, that much power to the top of the bus bar. You need to supply here. If you're going to do solar, you got to supply down there. And you might need to label that breaker so we know which one it is. Don't worry, I found it. He was good enough to uh, use his labeler for me. He labeled it. Here's his pull box. Um, I don't know. Hard to say what's going on here. Not how I'd have done it, but it works. And we got a trent all the way down the hill. Solar rays down the hill. Let's go take a look. All right, so here's the solar ray. This is Iron Ridge on three inch pipe. It looks like they knew how to build an Iron Ridge. But man, what was wrong with this wire in here? It's just a dangling. So, not quite how I'd have done that. They're using. Uh, Using AC disconnects, you cannot use AC to break DC power. These are Square D QO disconnects. They're actually rated to switch 48 volts, but they are not rated to switch 280 volts. So that's just not the way you want to do that right there, fellas. We got IMO disconnects for that. Gonna go through the wiring now. So now I'm walking around the array with the Solar Pathfinder tool and showing this customer what his shade window is so this is a very easy to use tool that I've, I've just stuck with I started using this thing 10 years ago and there's been lots of apps that have come out but this is the tool that I continue to use because you can hold it in your hand and uh, you don't have to worry about your phone discharging or not being able to look at your phone in the sun or anything like that but you can see it's got an arc on it and it just kind of shows where the shade falls on a point it's just got a compass and a reflective dome and uh, standing at the solar array right now I'm on the corner and you can see how much uh, shade this array is receiving so kind of a bummer for the customer he was trusting the solar company to site the array in the right position and they put it in a lot of shade I think I would have just faced it southwest and rotated it and uh, got a lot of that afternoon sun would have been a lot better so the homeowner didn't want to cut trees he did want me to look and use my tool to tell him that there wasn't sun on the array although you can pretty much tell if you stand out there and watch it uh, throughout the day but uh, I took the pathfinder tool and just looked at everything and kind of determined that if I rewire the array so that it uh, basically is in sub arrays like an east sub array and a west sub array it'll make more power I just pop the first J box and found some wire nuts so I don't know where it says it in the code but I have heard that you have to twist the wire together a minimum of three times I don't know if these are twisted together a minimum of three times the ground does not look irreversibly crimped so the, the way you do this guys is you use something called a power distribution block or a Polaris lug or you could even maybe crimp it, but you need to, I wouldn't crimp. But you need to mechanically connect these. Don't use wire nuts. This is gonna get hot and this is gonna melt. Just a matter of time. Also, might wanna use something that's liquid tight. I see daylight coming through there, buddy. So he knocked out on the, you know, he just, I don't think they knew what to do here. Looks like he used a little, no, he didn't use any silicone. Okay. So I guess I'm gonna find more splices now. 
Greetings from Jack Leg Town and happy holidays, folks. So, what my advice would be to somebody building a ground mount is think about if kids are going to come do it. This is in a residential area. It's in a power line right away. Kids ride four wheelers. Kids run around. There's a pond down here that kids might be trying to fish in. So, you know, you got to think if some kids come up and say, hey, cool, solar panels, and start swinging or jumping on panels. Is that for 25 years? Is that right there? Is that electrical wiring installation going to last as long as this solar array? Is that pressure treated post and concrete going to stand up as long as those pipes? So that work's going to have to be redone. It's just a matter of time. These wires have 280 to 300 volts going through them at any given time, and they're just dangling. Barely holding on right there. Um, let's look at more stuff wrong. Oh, ton of shade, which they just didn't quite clear enough trees. Uh, this is in a power line right away, so they do have some trees down. And then, of course, we've got this, this business going on. The square DQO business. Mm, those disconnects are expensive too. So here's another problem, right? We gotta make mistakes before we can learn from our mistakes. Minimum bend radius of wires. He's got a lot of tension on that J box. And that wire is definitely gonna stay put the way he's got it stretched. But this guy, I guess he was thinking, you know, look at that. That's a tight bend on that MC4 connector. He's relying on this little plastic clip to keep all this in. He did it over and over again. So, you know, doing it once or twice, you might be all right, but I wouldn't want that bend right on the connection like that. If I was gonna bend that wire, I think I'd go back a little bit. So, watch your bend radiuses, dress your wires right. In my opinion, this is not adequate wire management not protected ooh that'll get you so this guy paid around forty thousand dollars for the system it's uh 36 300 watt panels so it's over 10 kw so he's got a lot of shading on the east side of this array and then it kind of opens up so if you look at it with the pathfinder you can immediately tell that this side of the array has pretty good sunlight but this one doesn't well the solark is a string inverter so if one one or two of the panels get shade it's gonna drop the whole string out. So a great thing he could do just right off the bat is to go nine and nine instead of having nine across. And that would eliminate a lot of the shading losses. This is the pull box. And uh, he made it a little harder on himself. He's got more wire nuts. So this is the pull box. 